Hello out there, welcome to this tutorial on partial fractions. In this video, we'll be looking at improper fractions. If you are joining us now, check the description section of this video on our YouTube channel to get the link to the playlist containing all the videos on partial fractions. So we start with the first problem. Problem one. Resolve 3x cubed plus 3x squared minus x minus 2 over x plus 1 into x plus 2 into partial fractions. In this problem, if you look at it, the highest degree, that is the highest power here, is 3. And if this is expanded, the highest power will be x to the power of 2. So it is therefore evident that this is an improper fraction because the highest power at the numerator is greater than the highest power at the denominator. So, and if you look at the denominator, we have it as linear factors, non-repeated. That's one of the problems we solved in our previous videos. So to resolve this into partial fractions, we are going to expand the denominator and use it to divide the numerator. So we are going for long algebraic division. So the numerator is inside, which is x cubed plus 3x squared minus x minus 2. Why the denominator will be here? When expanded, will give us x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now to carry out this division, we concentrate on the first term here and the first term here. So we have x cubed divided by x squared gives x. So we have our x. We now use this x to multiply the divisor. So we have x times x squared gives x cubed. x times 3x gives 3x squared. And x times 2 gives plus 2x. Then we now subtract. In our subtraction, x cubed minus x cubed gives 0, 3x squared minus 3x squared gives 0, and minus x minus positive 2x gives negative 3x. Then we now bring down these two. And if you look at this now, this is our new dividend, which is less than the divisor. So we stop here. So from this, we now say this fraction will be equal to, this is the whole part, which is x plus, the remainder will now form the new numerator over the original denominator. So it is this one now, we are going to resolve into partial fractions. Now to do that, we have negative 3x minus 2 over x plus 1 into x plus 2. And we have already established that the denominators are linear factors non-repeated. So we are going to have it as a over x plus 1, which is the first factor, plus b over x plus 2, which is the second linear factor. So what we do here is to find the LCM, which is x plus 1 into x plus 2. We now use it to multiply every term. So x plus 1 into x plus 2 multiplied by the whole of these will be left with negative 3x minus 2. And then the whole of these multiplied by x plus 1 into x plus 2. This x plus 1 will go with x plus 1. We'll be left with x plus 2. Then we use it to multiply a. So we'll now have it as a into x plus 2. Then plus the whole of these multiply by the LCM, which is x plus 1 into x plus 2. So the x plus 2 will go with this x plus 2. We'll be left with x plus 1. We multiply it by b, and that will give us b into x plus 1. Now from here, we can find the values of a and b by substituting the appropriate value of x. So we start with x plus 1 equal to 0, which is going to give us a x is equal to negative 1. 
Then we now put x is equal to negative 1 into the e equation. So we now have negative 3 times negative 1 will give us positive 3. Then 3 minus 2 gives 1. Then here, negative 1 plus 2 will give us 1. 1 times a will give us a, which means a is equal to 1. So putting x is equal to negative 1 here, this will give us 0. And 0 times b will give 0. So b is eliminated. So after substituting x is equal to negative 1, we have 1 is equal to a, which means a is equal to 1. Then we go ahead again. We have used this linear factor. We use this linear factor now, which is x plus 2, equated to 0, and getting our x to be equal to negative 2. So we now put x is equal to negative 2. At that point, a will be eliminated. It will enable us to find the value of b. So we say negative 3 times negative 2 gives 6. 6 minus 2 gives 4. And here, negative 2 plus 2 gives 0 times a. a is gone. Negative 2 plus 1 gives negative 1. And negative 1 times b gives negative b, which means b is equal to negative 4. We now go ahead to substitute in the values of a and b. And uh, from there, we will now have our fraction resolved into partial fractions. So we have x cubed plus 3x squared minus x minus 2 over x plus 1 into x plus 2 to be equal to x, this x. So this one has been expanded to a over x plus 1 plus b over x plus 2. And our a is 1, so we have it as plus 1 over x plus 1. Then our b is negative 4. If we substitute b is negative 4, so we are going to have it as minus 4 over x plus 2. So with this, we have successfully resolved the fraction into partial fractions as x plus 1 over x plus 1 minus 4 over x plus 2. And uh, that's the end of that. We go to problem 2. For problem 2, resolve 2x4 plus 5x squared plus 5x plus 3 over x into x squared plus 1 into partial fractions. So here, this is a linear factor, and this is a non-linear factor at the denominator. If it is expanded, the highest power at the denominator will be 3. And here, the highest power is 4, which means this is an improper fraction. So to resolve this, we are going to divide the numerator by the denominator by long algebraic division. We're going to have the numerator inside, while the denominator, after expanding, will be placed here, which is x cubed plus x. Then by our division, we're using this first term here and this first term here. So 2x raised to the power 4 divided by x cubed will be left with 2x. So we have our 2x as quotient. Then the quotient now multiplied by the divisor. 2x multiplied by x cubed will give us 2x to the power of 4. 2x multiplied by x gives 2x squared. Then we subtract. So 2x4 minus 2x4 gives 0. 5x squared minus 2x squared gives 3x squared. Then we bring down this to form plus 5x plus 3x. And if you look at the remainder here, the highest power is less than the highest power here. So we are stopping here where this is the remainder. This is the quotient, the divisor, and the dividend. So we now express this fraction as equal to 2x. The new numerator now will be the remainder. That is going to be plus 3x squared plus 5x plus 3 over our original denominator which is x into 
x squared plus 1. So this is the one now we are going to resolve into partial fraction. So to do that, um, this is a linear factor. It will be treated appropriately. This is a non-linear factor of degree 2. We'll also treat that one appropriately. So we take this linear factor to be a over x. And the non-linear factor is going to give us bx plus c over x squared plus 1. So check the description section of this video on our YouTube channel to get the link to the playlist containing how we treated the non-linear factor at the denominator. So A and B are the constants we are going to look for. So to do that, we multiply every term by x into x squared plus 1. So if you do that to the left-hand side, we'll be left with only the numerator. That will give us 3x squared plus 5x plus 3. Multiply the whole of these by the LCM, which is the denominator here. This x will go. We'll be left with x squared plus 1. Multiply by a. That will give us a into x squared plus 1. Then plus multiply the whole of these by the LCM, which is this denominator here. The x squared plus 1 will go with this x squared plus 1. We'll be left with x. Then we use it to multiply bx plus c, which is going to give us x into bx plus c. So by substituting the appropriate values of x, we'll get the values of a, b, and c. So the first value here is when we put x is equal to 0, b and c will go. We'll be left with uh, a. Then from there, we get the value of a. Then subsequently, we substitute. So to start with, we put x is equal to 0. Putting x is equal to 0, this is 0, 0. We are left with a 3. And x is 0 here, we'll be left with 1. Multiply by a, we have a a. x is 0, 0. Multiply by anything, we give us 0. So b and c are eliminated. So we have 3 is equal to a after substituting x is equal to 0 in the equation, which means x is equal to 3. Then we now go ahead. Since there's no any other value that we can put to eliminate any of the numerical constants a, b, and c, so we can just substitute any one to give us, um, since we've gotten the value of a, at that point, we are going to form a pair of simultaneous equations. So we now first put x is equal to 1, which is the easiest. This is going to give us 3 plus 5, 8 plus 3 gives 11. Here we have a 1 plus 1. Since x1 squared is 1 plus 1 gives 2. 2 times a and our a is 3. 2 times 3 will give us a 6, then plus b plus c. Since 1, 1, we'll just be left with a b plus c. So taking this to this side, we have b plus c is equal to 11 minus 6, which is equal to 5. So we call this one equation 1. Then to go ahead again, we can just put x is equal to negative 1. Your choice of x here is based on your convenience. So if you like, you can put x is equal to 100. <laughs> oh, I bet you will not like it. Just look for the smallest number that you can easily manipulate. So put x is equal to negative 1. So here, negative 1 squared will give us 1 times 3 gives 3. 3 minus 5. Since 5 minus 1 gives minus 5, so 3 minus 5 gives minus 2 plus 3 gives a 1. And uh, here is going to give us 1 plus 1, 2. 2 times 3 gives 6. This is negative 1 times negative b will give us positive b. Negative 1 times positive c will give us minus c. So 
um, I am taking this to this side. I will have it as B minus C is equal to negative 5. Since if you take this to this side, it becomes 1 minus 6, which is negative 5. Then we call this one equation 2. Um, we are going to solve equations 1 and 2 simultaneously. So to do that, um, I can just say equation 1 plus equation 2. If you do that, um, C will be eliminated. So we have equation 1 plus 2. So B plus B will give us 2B. And 5 plus negative 5 will give us 0. So B will be equal to 0. Then we now subtract equation 1 and 2. So equation 1 minus equation 2. This is B minus B. This is gone. C minus negative C will give us 2C. And 5 minus negative 5 will give us 10. 2C is equal to 10. So C is equal to 5. So we have gotten the values of A, B, and C. We then substitute. So in our substitution, our 2x raised to the power 4 plus 5x squared plus 5x plus 3 over x into x squared plus 1 will be equal to 2x. And this has been resolved into partial fraction as a over x plus bx plus c all over x squared plus 1. And uh, that's going to give us a plus. Our a is 3. That will be 3 over x. Then our b is 0. So the whole of this is gone. Our c is 5. So at the numerator here, we are only left with c, which is equal to 5. That will be plus 5 over x squared plus 1. And uh, we have successfully resolved the improper fraction in problem 2 into its partial fractions. And this is where we are ending this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to check the description section of this video on our YouTube channel to get the link to the playlist containing all the videos on partial fractions. Remember to like and share this video. Your comment to help us improve in our video production is also important to us. Until we meet again, goodbye.